What will we do with the heron's heeds? What will we do with the heron's heeds? We'll knock them into loaves of breeds. Hello, Donald. Hi. The two guys from London I'm coming with. Oh, way back, way back. Talk to you later. Cheery, cheery. There a bonny lassie dwells, the lass I love the best. There wild woods grow and rivers row, and money a hell between. But day and night my fancy's flight is ever with my jean. When, when I came up here, I was ten. And I remember just wondering. At that point, there weren't even any fences here. It was just the dry stone walls, and most of them had crumbled down. So it was so open and free. A group of people come to the caravan site at Melvich at the other side of the, the big beach. And they've brought up their kids here in the summer. You know, they've spent, they've brought their kids here for the whole summer. And both them and their children say the one thing is it's the freedom of the place. And it's something that I think has been lost for many, many kids. I wouldn't say anyone in the new school is like hooked to every app online. None of us are ever really on constantly and there's no Wi-Fi here anyway. You socialise a lot more as well when you live in a place like this. You know, you have all these people around you who are in the same situation so you're kind of forced to talk to them <laughs> in a good way. <laughs> In the cities, there's more of a pressure, an online pressure for sure, because you know, down here it's not really a problem. It's, it's more used as a tool down yeah. here more than it is in the city. If people are using social media, they're usually talking about here, it's usually when they're on a holiday or something like that. Mm -hmm. They're not talking about their daily life and walking out in a croft. <laughs> <laughs> Folk music if that's the word you want to use, the music of the people. And it develops when people have time to be with each other and to talk to each other and to share with each other. Compared to the amount of time that our traditions have been around, the, the arrival of the internet and social media is, is the blink of an eye. So we must embrace it. But at the same time, we must make sure that it doesn't take over and that it doesn't intrude. I'm Gregor McAllen, storyteller, Shonaki, and proudly living in Ascent. He says she wants in because she got a corn ground, Millen Mulch was free. Her mother said, hey, dang him out. Hey, hey, she want in. Her mother said, hey, dang him out. Hey, she want in, she. But her father said, no, keep him in. Hey, hey, she want in. Keep him in. He say want and she, because she got a corn ground, and he's a king o' our clan. He say she want and, and Mill and Mulch was free. The, the, the bairns being brought up today, um, they're going to be absorbed in technology, obviously. Uh, it's going to be moved on, even as we speak now it's moving on. But the important thing is that they don't lose the culture and the heritage of their fathers, their grandfathers, grandmothers, 
whatever aunties, uncles, going right back generations to the oral culture. And we wouldn't be here now with technology if it wasn't for the oral culture. Who owns this landscape? The millionaire who bought it? Or the poacher coming down the track with a stag on his back? Something like that. It's friend is confronted with the back leg of a deer and they've got a kitchen table, a knife and uh, and what do they do? So I know what they do now. They go on the internet and they watch YouTube videos on how to butcher a deer, on how to do this, how to do that. Um, you did that when it's the all cow, there. When the cow was kicking. I did that when you we that when then. we took the cow in for the first time because she was kicking and she wouldn't allow me to milk her. And uh, I asked Mr. Google, you know, how do you get a cow to stop kicking? And at the same time, I asked this old guy, the Gaelic speaker I told you about, and he said, oh, it's easy. You just tie a rope tight around the middle. And I thought, that's a bit primitive. And then you go on to Google, first thing. Well, you get this rope, you tie it very tightly around the middle. So, uh, so my friend was uh, way ahead of Mr. Google in that because he'd known this for years. And years. Anyway, yeah, that's it. And it works, by the way. Yeah, very tightly around the middle, just in front of the udder, very tight, and uh, and she doesn't kick. There you go. Free advice for any London dweller who wishes to buy a cow. of the area is the sadness of the clearances and all that kind of thing. You know, it, it makes you feel for the place, just seeing the ruins and the thoughts of the people that lived here previously, you know, what, what was their life like? And I think there's a, a bit of that is in a lot of Scottish people generally, and it certainly is in, in me. When I, before we came to live here, we'd go walking out in the hinterland up towards Cunyag and things and come across in the bracken, the ruins of a wee house. I thought, people lived here. And you think, oh, how did they live? They had a wee kale yard, a wee garden, they had a cow, they had some sheep, but they lived frugally. And there's a, quite a romantic notion about all of that. I'm sure it was pretty hard and not very nice at times but there is this romantic side to it. And there's a bit of living here and doing that kind of thing that, as Ray said, it reconnects you with that. You're, you're living this to an extent, a comfortable extent. You're living this romantic ideal. Find you, find you. This is not my home soil but it feels like it, you know. It's certainly, I, I don't have any desire to leave this at all. Um, this is where I shall probably die, you know, happily, I hope.